Welcome everyone to the Wednesday weekly webinar. I am Julie Darden Robinson and I'll be your moderator. And today's speaker is Glenn Muskie. But we, before we get started, I'd like to remind you that we have four more webinars in this series coming up. Next week will be Clifford Hall. And you can see the topics. And I'll be doing the one on April 13th. And then we also have um, some other ones, April 20th and the 27th. So go ahead and check out those titles. And we hope you come back and join us. And if you've been on the uh, webinar so far, when we've been just chatting a bit, you'll know that we archive all of these. And we're starting to get a lot of visits to the YouTube links that we put directly on the Field to Fork website. Well, we'll all have you in listening mode, but go ahead and type your questions in the chat pod, and I'll ask Glenn to kind of keep an eye on the chat pod so he can answer as he goes or answer them at the end. So that's number five on this screen. Uh, we have a short survey that we asked you to fill out at the end of the webinar. These, this whole project was made possible by a grant. So that allows me to have some numbers to uh, provide to the grant agency. And upon filling out that survey, as soon as you hit submit, you'll be taken to a certificate. So you can download that certificate. So if you require continuing ed for whatever field, you could use that certificate as a form of proof. And as a further little carrot to dangle, I will be sending out some prizes based on random drawings of the people who provide their contact information. So please do the survey. We really appreciate that. So our topic today is Small Business Savvy, How to Avoid Being the Best Kept Secret. And as I mentioned, our presenter is Glenn Muskie. Glenn is the Rural and Agribusiness Enterprise Development Specialist for NDSU Extension Service. And his role is to help new and existing businesses business owners develop, grow, and efficiently operate their business, including developing an online presence. So we're really happy to have you with us, Glenn, and I'm going to turn over the mic to you. Thanks, Julie, and welcome, everyone, to uh, this Wednesday webinar. Uh, I look forward to offering some ideas and certainly look forward to your questions. As Julie indicated, uh, I'll try to watch the chat box. Uh, uh, you can stop me at any time. Uh, you can also, uh, uh, if you don't get your question asked today but something comes up, uh, my email is glenn.musky at ndsu.edu. You're certainly welcome to send me an email or give me a call. Uh, I will also be uh, putting the slides. Uh, I usually tend to have way more than I can get through, so we skip some or go through it rather quickly. Uh, I tend to put all my slides up on SlideShare, uh, and so you could go out there and find just the slides per se without the audio. Uh, or if you ever want to use them or use parts of them, again, uh, just let me know. So uh, as Julie said, I work with, uh, I, they took that long title and just basically say I work with small business owners, uh, many family business owners, and, uh, but uh, one of the common questions I get, and, and the reason I suggested this topic, is this whole idea of marketing. Uh, it's it's just something that people don't think about or think it's going to automatically happen. And so let's uh, begin here. Uh, this is the typical brain uh, thought that people have is, I just have to build my project, and people will just automatically come to to it. Uh, this is the field of dreams uh, mythology. Uh, if you build it, they will come. And the basic answer to that is in your dreams. Uh, it doesn't happen that way. Uh, if you've ever been a business owner or just think about uh, business owners, there are huge numbers. Uh, numbers vary widely across the board as to how many ads you see in a day. And when I say ads, I mean of all types and kinds, whether online or traditional, or just meeting people who have a business. Uh, and it's this perception that, uh, you know, you're probably bombarded. We know the numbers are, are 
5,000 or more a day? The truth is, is that you probably don't even recognize most of those. Uh, our brains can only sort through and handle so many things. So while the number of ads that are put in front of you may be 5 or 10,000, uh, the number you're going to recognize is maybe more in the uh, 500 range, 600 range that you will say, hey, I saw that ad today. But those that even really sink in are probably down in the 50 mark or something. So uh, that's, that's, that's what we're working against and stuff. And what we're going to talk about today is it's not new to businesses or it's not different for businesses. We often talk about... Uh, in, uh, extension being the best kept secret and thus the topic for my talk is how do you step outside and move from being the best kept secret to something that everybody knows and uh, it comes you'll see later on by always be always marketing no matter what you're doing or where, where you're at or anything so uh, we don't want to be the best kept secret uh, take today's, uh, you know, fuel to fork, uh, that may be a dream. It's a dream of many people to, to develop a business based on local food, the taste, the quality. There's so many things behind it, uh, and yet people won't find you. Or even if they find you, if you've been to a farmer's market and you start walking down the row, who do you stop at? You stop at people who have uh, something that draws your attention, somebody who steps out and says hi, or they have some activity going on, or in some markets they can do taste samples. Those are the things that are going to bring people in. And we need to recognize that. And like I said, whether it's marketing for your business or marketing for extension or marketing anything else, uh, you need to be present and outgoing in a sense is to do something to attract uh, people to the market. You may or may not remember this, but uh, you know the, the, the first, what cost $5 million in the last 30 seconds? Anybody have a quick answer? I got yeah. some, yep, a Super Bowl ad. That's that's roughly what it cost us last year to uh, uh, have a Super Bowl ad. It was about five million dollars. Of course, they get a, 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 a if you do a large amount, it gets cheaper than that. But how many of you can talk about a Super Bowl ad that you even remembered? You know, not that many months ago and stuff. Yet on the right, you will see a Super Bowl, uh, something that happened in the Super Bowl, and some of you may remember it, uh, some of you may not. But it's the Super Bowl when the lights went out. And uh, Oreo Cookie managed to grab that moment and do a cute little uh, uh, tweet that took them, you know, uh, no time, just a clever person sitting, sitting wherever they were at and talked about you can still dunk in the dark. That tweet was seen by estimated five and a quarter million people. Now, only 100 million people were at this, watched the Super Bowl that day. But yet that tweet was just went viral across uh, all the platforms. And so they got five times the number of people who saw their tweet and passed it along and did other things with it and stuff. That's the type of power we can have with good marketing. But, of course, it does require people to be on their toes, ready to shift and to move. Now, uh, when Oreo Cookie did that, it wasn't by luck or by chance. They had a room full of people tweeting that day. And, you know, some of those people in the room managed to grab a hold of it and push it out. So when we talk about marketing, understand that people need to know and be reminded that you exist. Uh, people, you know, you go out there once and you put something out there. Uh, that's great. However, our memory span in 30 days, we will probably forget that you ever put something in front of us. We know it takes three to five times for you to put your name in front of me before I'll even remember that your business exists. 
and it takes seven to ten times that I see your name and you have a compelling reason why I should even come to your store or look at you online. So you may say, man, this is just why even bother? Well, uh, you know, it, 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 that's a good question. And so one of the things that this points out is, uh, you know, they're going to find you through marketing, and marketing is everything you do. What you can do wrong here is, one, do no marketing. Now, some businesses will succeed. Uh, it's getting less. Uh, we're, we're, we know that marketing does have an impact about businesses succeeding. Uh, so it is getting less. But this, So if you don't do any marketing, there's even a worse thing you can do, and that's to market one time or two times and then stop. Because now you've spent cash and time, uh, time maybe more than the cash, and with that remembrance rate that people have, it's just a cost then to you. It is not an investment. So whatever your marketing pla uh, ideas are going to be, whatever your strategy is going to be, you need to plan on doing it on a regular basis. So therefore, uh, you'll hear me say over and over again that uh, don't commit to too many platforms or too many ideas, get, get a campaign and one or two tools, and just continue to, to follow those tools. And you know, pick the tools that will best reach your audience. There's really three components to marketing. One is you, and then we have the old traditional marketing, and then we have online marketing. You hear a great deal about online marketing today. It's huge. Uh, the, the amounts being spent on online marketing this year will probably uh, equal the amount spent on a television marketing this year. And this is the first time that will have ever happened in 2016. Uh, regular, uh, <clears throat> yeah, every day or every week, whatever, uh, Todd, that uh, uh, fits with your platform. And this is where, where we'll scare a lot of people off as you get into social media. The lifespan of those uh, tweets and posts and, and not as much the blogs is so short that, you know, you will find people who will say, well, if you're tweeting, you should be out there three, four times a day, five. Uh, they only last. The lifespan of a, of a tweet is probably in the range of 15 minutes. And then so many tweets come through. Recognize that for a lot of tweets, uh, or a lot of people who are tweeting, uh, they there are about 5,000 tweets a second put onto Twitter. So now you're not getting that feed of all of those, but that just sort of just the huge numbers uh, that are out there and stuff. The important key, no matter whether it's you or traditional or online marketing, that you need to remember is to be on the network that works. Where's your audience? You know, are, are they connecting with people one-on-one -on -one marketing? Are they doing it via reputation? Maybe they love to uh, PR. Maybe that's what brings in your audience, or that's where to reach them. Or is it online? And don't, uh, we often think millennials are the online generation, and they certainly are active users in it. But the fastest growing group right now are seniors. And so don't say that, well, you know, seniors are, are what we're talking about here. And we're going to go into these in more detail as we go along. Uh, okay, let's move along here. So marketing, it begins with you. You, the business owner, or you, the key and uh, leader of a team or an effort and stuff, it begins with that person. And, and that goes up into that, that top uh, grouping that we saw there and stuff. You don't have to do it all, but you are the leader in, in the way that uh, you're going to reach out to people, but you're also the leader in putting a face, a reputation, a brand together. The pieces today must fit together. It doesn't pay, and I've seen this happen, where their online marketing was colors of blue and yellow because it looked bright. Their traditional marketing, their colors were their traditional red and gray. 
uh, that you know it's just it's just ineffective. So everything's got to fit together, including this visual aspect. And, and visual is so important uh, for people to or to have. I mean, we're really becoming more and more of a visual world. And a uh, question was asked, what are your thoughts on Twitter? Uh, again, it depends upon who the audience is. Uh, it, it, some audiences are going to be attracted to it, others are not. Uh, Twitter does have a tremendous reach. Uh, it's often considered a great way to be in touch with people. I just came back from the e-extension conference and they pushed Twitter very hard uh, as being a, a source that you should go to. Uh, it might be. But if you're looking for professionals and you're trying to attract professionals, uh, maybe LinkedIn is the better one. Now, we don't do as much selling via LinkedIn. That's more of establishing reputation and ideas. So pick pick your platform. And then, you know, we're going to talk later on. I'll mention metrics a little bit more and everything. So evaluate what works and follow that along. Okay. Uh, Number four, it's not a cost. So many people look at their marketing and they look at the dollars going out and it really, and you know, that's what scares them. Just read an article half an hour before we got started on here taking, it's not a cost, it's an investment. However, you should be looking at the metrics behind that investment to determine whether each and every investment is worthwhile. How many people does it bring in? How much are those people expected to buy over a lifetime? This is not a one-time thing because you want to bring them in and keep them. And then, you know, so what's the value? What's the bottom line on all this? So the you section, I said I'd just briefly uh, go into some detail on these. The you is you. It's that networking. It's the handshake. It's the storytelling. And that's the one great advantage uh, you have when you're telling uh, doing your marketing is you have a story to tell. And I don't just mean if you're a business owner, but that's a great time. Uh, when I work with these uh, small value-added farmers, uh, local food uh, people, they have a story to tell. Why are they in it? What are they doing it for? And that story can't be beat. That really brings it personal. It brings them. It makes them real in front of me. And that begins to build them their reputation. But before we jump to that, uh, business cards will always remain, I do believe, at least for many years in the future, one of the key tools you have to have in your marketing arsenal, and that's a business card. And don't forget that there's a backside to business cards, and you can put a lot of good information there. It can be a shopping list. It can be just a quote that you like. It can be, this goes well with. I've seen people put sh very short little recipes on the back. I've seen them put maps on the back. So works very well. Thank you notes. May sound old and, and antiquated, but, you know, when you get a personal thank you note from somebody, you'll remember it. Uh, reputation is then a second part of you. Uh, who are you? Can they trust you? Are you reliable? And what are the customers saying about you and customer satisfaction? So that gets into that word of mouth and reviews. And I really encourage you to get your customers, encourage them to go online and give you a review. I'm not one of these people, though, who says, go out and I have to have tents. Have you ever been to a, a store or recently I've had some oil change and they all say, well, I have to have a tent. I have to have a tent or they think I'm not doing my job. I'm sorry. In my mind, the tent is, is, is superior service. Well, I had good oil changes. There's nothing wrong with them, but I wouldn't say they were excellent. They were just what I expected. So is that a tent? I don't know. There's some, the, the, the jury's out yet on that one. Uh, and if they're bad, you want them to say that too online. Don't be upset if you get a bad review. It gives you a chance to open up a dialogue with that person, or at least you hope you do. Or if nothing else, uh, a person who's upset will tell at least 20 people, well, that was in the days when we were saying it face to face. Today, it could be millions because they could go online. And you want to be able to catch that up front and start talking with those clients or at least the rest of your 
uh, clientele about what happened and the issue as far as you know it. Traditional marketing is also PR, public relations. These are things you're not spending money for, but where you're showing yourself to be uh, someone helping out the community, helping out the uh, other, other business owners. You become the expert. You become the go-to person. Uh, and when that happens, your your name gets spread around uh, like nobody else's business. I mean, other people start picking up on it. And I've had that experience, or I'm part of that experience. Uh, uh, a colleague and I uh, uh, now at, at at North Dakota State. She's been there for years. Margaret Fitzgerald, now dean. Uh, we got into the studying copeners. And it is not, it is every July, uh, February 14th when we get near Valentine's Day, we're the experts on copreneurs. And so somebody will call us from usually some big papers or other sorts like that. So uh, it, in most public relations just takes time. It doesn't take much money. You really can't buy that. Traditional marketing, of course, is where you're going to spend some money. And these are all some of the tools that you can spend it on. Uh, some people say that radio is dead, or TV is dead, or print is dead, and none of them are dead. All of them can be very effective, again, if you know your audience and you know the message that you want to portray on, a, on that uh, and promotion. Okay, online marketing, the magic, or so we think, uh, often thought of as the magic, uh, this whole idea of visual and everything, and I, but I, it's the same as before. It's just new tools, new ways to do it. That middle picture, you see two women having a conversation there with their smartphones out. Many That scares many business owners. When they're in, the, in, in my store and you've got your smartphone out, I know that you're shopping for a cheaper price and you're about to go order it online. No. The reality that we're finding is that, yeah, they're either doing a, they're looking at a consumer. They may come and ask you about getting a cheaper price. But if you've got them in the store, you're a long way to winning, winning that conversation and winning perhaps a conversion to them. When you look at that wheel on the right, I want you to recognize that in the middle, the most important part of your online marketing should probably be your website. And why do I say that? What's wrong with the, you know that one arrow you see up on top? That's email. Uh, the red arrow with the W under, under, on the bottom there, that's a blog. You know, some of these are great aspects. But with many of them, you don't control it. And what you want, and that's why we put the, your website as the key, is you want that entity that, that you control and nobody else does. It's crucial. Facebook can change their algorithm tomorrow, and you have no control over it. They can decide what you're going to see, and they do decide what you're going to see. Same with LinkedIn, YouTube. Uh, you know, and so you can set up your filters and stuff, but you have to take control of it and be in charge. Okay, steps to going online. I'm going to spend more time on that. It's one of the newer ones. As I said, you can always uh, ask me more questions, but the first step to going online is know what's being said about you. Uh, many business owners tell me all the time, I hear it routinely, and especially as I cross North Dakota and other of, the, of our Great Plains states and talk about being a, a, a business owner and, you know, you need to get online, they say, nah, I don't need to. None of them have ever checked what's being said about them. And I just gave you a partial list of the possible sites that review people and some of the businesses that are out there and stuff. I don't go to a city anymore. I don't uh, take a hotel room or a, rarely go to a restaurant that I'm not in TripAdvisor. Uh, and people are checking this out. And look at that. 78% of Americans say online reviews influence their purchasing decision. And yet the people influencing me, I don't have any clue who they are. But remember, we tend not to do it based on just one person says, but we tend to do it based on what the trends are saying in those reviews. So you want lots of reviews. Don't worry if you get one bad one. Encourage your business owners or your uh, clients to give you more good ones. And let the good sort of balance out the bad and stuff. And as I said, if you get a bad one, respond to it. I uh, went to recently, it was, was traveling, had a chance, and, and I picked a restaurant. and It had sort of mixed reviews. I should have listened. Uh, the food was okay. 
but they said, you know, I think they're just riding on past history of the of the restaurant, and I would probably say that's the experience I had uh, that evening. Uh, the second thing, claim your bubble. This is really brought up initially by Google, but if you've ever done a Google map, you see those little stars in that picture you see there off to the right. That's where my office is located here in Bismarck, and have we claimed it? You know, and so there you see it doesn't show very well, but the NDSU Extension Service, you know, shows a picture of our building, shows the map to where we get there. You need to make sure you claim your bubble, because if you don't, actually somebody else can claim it for you, uh, and then you have a heck of a job to get them to to release it. So, uh, so claim your bubble. Know why you're doing it and what you want from it. You have lots of ways to get two people. You have to decide what's the best way. You're not going to want to take on all those. I have a lot, uh, several of them that I play with, but my playing with them is so I can try to be more informed and a better uh, resource for business owners. So I'm probably involved with more of these than I, than I should be. I know I'm involved with more of them than I can handle in the way that would be best done. To develop your roadmap, it's part of that strategy. And remember, you're blending this off with traditional marketing, too, and you're blending this off or mixing it uh, with uh, uh, your the, the you in this whole thing. And then you have to allocate the resources. And if you're a sole proprietor and nobody else around, you are the resources when it comes to people time. So, And then, as I said, we start with the website. I gave you my uh, website address in that whole picture. And next we go search and lurk. We always think about lurkers. Ooh, you know, there. That's don't don't be concerned about that online. It's perfectly fine to get a Twitter account and just see what's what's going on. Uh, find some people you want to follow and just watch that go through and see what happens and see how people respond and see what's said about them. Facebook the same way. Any of the online platforms, it's perfectly fine to lurk. That's part of the learning experience. Uh, and as, as uh, some of the, the gurus would say, that's just uh, learning, uh, you know, sort of working out loud and learning and stuff. Pick your platform, no more than two. Uh, engage. And, you know, once you get through the lurking, part of where you get the biggest bang for the buck on online uh, media is engagement. But watch what works. If it's not working, don't keep going there. You know, move on to something else. Uh, reach out and then learn the lingo. And I put down there a hashtag. Uh, recently, the question was about Twitter and the thoughts about Twitter. And on Twitter, one of the crucial things you have to learn how to use are hashtags. That's how, that's how you can search for what other people are saying. And so it's a real uh, advantage to learn that lingo and learn what hashtags are. That's how we sort things on, on Twitter. You can put a hashtag and a search term in there, and everything will just pop right up for you. And that's really uh, a big advantage. OK, what each offers online. Uh, uh, you know, your website, that's your name, address, phone number, hours, maybe a map. Uh, don't think it has to be everything. You don't need to have a shopping cart. You may want to have a shopping cart. You don't need to. But it really establishes you. You may have something about reputation. You may have some of your products in there. But the four things you definitely have in there is name, address, phone number, and hours. And I probably should have put a map on there also. Facebook, good for building the fan base. Uh, you can really do some neat calls to action. Facebook is doing a lot of advertising, or you can put paid ads on Facebook right now. Uh, Twitter, why would you do Twitter? It's a good driver to websites and blogs. And you can tell your story very well at 104 characters per uh, uh, tweet. Uh, and then I, some of the other ones. The other, you know, another big one that a lot of people go to is blogs. Blogs have set up, uh, let's use WordPress, and I'm just using these as examples. There's lots of other uh, uh, apps out there that you could use. Uh, blogs 
there's sort of a crossover because a blog can actually be built if you're doing it on WordPress. It becomes your website base also. It can be. And so a lot of people uh, take that. Uh, Pinterest, a visual, very visual driven. Uh, Pinterest right now is about 80% uh, females. So if females are in your wheelhouse for a potential audience, you may want to think about it. Lots of infographics uh, on Pinterest. YouTube, one of the big uh, uh, video. Video is, is grabbing a lot of people and, and stuff. Snapchat, uh, and I'm not even fully up on all of them. I, you know, I feel like I'm running every day and I'm just staying, you know, sort of half a mile behind at least uh, on deciding what's the best ones. And I mentioned paid ads already. Why bother? Well, eight times the greater click-through rate. Uh, people see them, they see them more often, and they respond to them. And all of these either have or will soon have uh, some type of paid ad possibility. Uh, question by David. He's asking, would you include your email address on the website? Without a doubt. Without a doubt, uh, that's, I guess when I, when I made the comment about some of the things to include on that website, uh, that's sort of an automatic when I say name, address. In my world, my address is more importantly my, my uh, uh, email address than it is my physical address. I don't get a lot of people walking into 2718 Gateway Avenue uh, here in Bismarck. My people enter my store usually via uh, uh, an email. Uh, and matter of fact, I encourage that. And for a business owner, they can't get away to come up here and talk. So we do a lot of our talking via email, uh, video. Uh, that's, that's slowly growing, uh, or, or some of the telephone medias and stuff. Uh, we have had some experience. We've been playing with Facebook ads. And you can be very effective. And you can find a very large audience relatively quickly. Uh, we took a, a website. We had nobody uh, at powerofbusiness.net. And we drove it with Facebook ads. And in two weeks, we had about, I think we're just shy of 2,400 followers. We probably got 2,000 in that first uh, two-week period. Uh, what are we having difficulty with? OK, that sounds really great, right? We got 2,000 people to follow us. What we're having difficulty is, yeah, they followed us, but they're not engaging. They're not doing anything. Uh, and so you, you, you need to think about, OK, what, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? Uh, and then as you talk, you, you know, you need to think about these online presences for your business if you're not there. Because uh, a recent article just talks about Amazon is starting to build stores. So they're coming, they're coming the way of the, the, we often talk about bricks to clicks. Well, they're going clicks to bricks. And they're not the only online marketer that's, that's doing that. And they're using their, what they're learning online, plus they're very savvy. When you go to an Amazon store, you're going to get reviews right on your smartphone while you're standing there. Or you can, you can uh, look at the QR codes that are on some of these shelves and get, get more information bombarded out to you. Plus, they can instantly see what are price points that you might buy it at or that people are buying it at. I mean, they can play with those numbers and that data just really fast. Now, it's easy for them. And no, I won't say easy. They have a big staff. But still, think about the possibilities as you go through this, which leads me into um, here, it just, uh, this is just a Facebook page. This is, you know, I popped it up one day. Right there, four places on my first page that they, I could promote this. I can promote the page. I can promote local businesses. I can boost my website. I can boost a post. And there are other, those are, the, those are sort of the four biggies there. I can invite friends. I can have contests. Uh, all of those possible for ways to attract and bring more people into your business or to make you aware of your business. Now, bringing them in every time you do something and do a post or a promotion, you need to have a strong call for action. 
what do you want the person to do? Do you just want them to like your page? Do you want them to do something, click on something? Do you want them to, I mean, we can obviously say we want them to buy, but on social media, we don't push buying so much. Uh, it's not a platform where people take kindly to being bombarded with, you know, sale ads, if I can use that term, all the time. It's a way of engaging and having conversation. And, oh, by the way, we might have something to help you out. That's what happens in the social media world. And so if you're, uh, uh, you know, this back to field to fork, uh, there are several places, you know, could, you could be the local producer, you might be a food hub, you might be the fort people, or maybe a restaurant. All of them need some type of marketing effort if they're going to stay in business. And we need that whole chain uh, if, if we're going to uh, uh, really be, uh, uh, get the most out of our economic advantages and stuff. And then when you do all this, uh, you know, you're going to get analytics and metrics. Uh, things can be measured in ways other than money. And, and again, this is just some of the information. This is one screen of information versus our power of business uh, ads that we were running and stuff. And it tells you how many. I can find out where they come from. I can find out that most of the people who came to our ads and even looked at our ads, and you can see some of the numbers there, 2,000 looked at this one, 2,000 saw that one. Uh, about 80% of the people coming in were on mobile, mobile devices. So whenever you're building anything, and that includes your website and everything, you better be ready for mobile. Uh, uh, desktops, they're not going to go away, but that's not what you see people walking the streets with and, and uh, sitting in, uh, in the airport with. They're uh, sitting in your homes. I mean, it's just incredible. Uh, when my family comes over, uh, my son-in-law, my daughter, uh, you know, and my wife, and we're all sitting there pounding away on different, different mobile devices and stuff, and, and the computer just sits there. So, so think about that. Uh, if you have a Facebook page, how often should you be posting? Can you post too much? Yes, yes, you can. At least in my mind, you can. Uh, but as I say with Twitter, they recommend you tweet four or five times a day. And I, these are only recommendations. Uh, my Twitter account, I tweet once to twice a day. That's all I put out there. Uh, is that fully correct? You know, I haven't tried the more advanced. Facebook, uh, one to two a day is sort of the rule of thumb that uh, is generally talked about, uh, how many you should put out there and stuff. I don't do it on weekends uh, all the time. I do it some. Uh, but yet, if that's when my audience is, and, and again, I, I can talk better than I can do. So I haven't really checked my metrics to see if I'm missing my audience by not being there on weekends. Uh, I don't think so. My numbers tend to fall quite quite a bit on weekends. Uh, reposting. Uh, yes, reposting is fine. Uh, remember that because they have such short windows, uh, a Facebook post is, uh, you know, a tweet is good for about 15 minutes, a Facebook post about good for about three to four hours, and then it just gets buried in the whole stream of things and nobody's going to find it again. So post it at different times. Uh, we just heard at this conference I, I mentioned, uh, they talked about taking a Facebook post uh, and maybe posting it three, four times. But the other thing you can also do, don't post it in exactly the same but also put it on Twitter, also put it on, and there are some tools that can help you do some of that and make it a little bit easier. You know, not the same exact wording and stuff, but mix it up, try different times, shoot it out, and so they use some, you know, get, get your money's worth out of it. Uh, but reposting something that's already on Facebook, yeah, you can put it on Facebook two or three times, uh, and I'm going to start, uh, I got encouraged by this conference, and I'm going to start reposting things more often and see if that helps or hurts things. And certainly you can cross post. Uh, uh, when I write a news article, uh, that is going to be uh, somewhere down the line 
that's going to be a blog post or two. It will turn out to be one or two or three Facebook posts. Now I have the advantage I have an administrator of multiple sites, but you know I, I would hope to get my article should be a blog post and it should be at least two, hopefully three Facebook posts and a couple of tweets or more. Uh, again, because of posting at different times, even the same time on different days, or just in general because the stream goes through so fast. So, so you can do that, uh, and people will by watching your your uh, metrics, you can begin to tell if they're starting to get turned off or not. Okay. Uh, you know, like I said, there are analytics. You see Facebook there. Uh, you see Auli. If Auli is a shortener, instead of having this long URL, it shortens it up. Uh, Bitly is another one uh, that you can use, uh, and then you have uh, uh, you know some other analytics that you're going to get from Twitter. You're going to get LinkedIn. You know, there's you you'll get more data than you know what to do with. Uh, but don't. Uh, look at it. I mean, don't just say, ah, well, someday. Uh, and yet, I, I have to confess that I'm sort of good at being someday on that. So, two caveats with marketing. They all take resources. They all take resources. Be it traditional, and I show the online, but the reality is, is traditional takes resources too. You takes resources. And time, you see my picture of time is much larger than money. Money, uh, it doesn't have to be as much, especially in the online world, and you can generate more money. What you can't generate is more time. Uh, now, some people, you know, you can hire it done, uh, but remember in some of the online stuff, what I want to hear from a small business owner is I want to hear your personality. I want to see what, what, you're, what you're talking about and stuff, uh, and some of that requires the owner's presence or certainly a significant player in the business to to give me some of that. And like I said, I just thought of the story now. I was in a town here in North Dakota. We'll leave the town nameless because it was sort of embarrassing. And I was doing a, a an online presentation and pointed out that this one restaurant uh, was, I know the town pretty well, and according to the map that I found, the restaurant was in the used car lot for the Chevy auto dealer. And I said, you know, you got to check these things. Because if I'm driving through and you take me to the wrong spot, I'm probably out of there. Well, regretfully, or maybe good, the uh, restaurant owner was sitting in the audience. Uh, and so we had a conversation afterwards and stuff. And I said, I'm, you know, I'm not poking you know, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but this is the audience today drives with their phone on, and they're getting more sophisticated, smarter all the time. These phones, and matter of fact, cars got it built right in now. The second thing is that no, it will change. Everything I said today, including traditional media, but certainly the online media is going to change. Companies get bought out. Uh, if you think back oh, three, four years, Google Plus was going to be the big dog uh, with their social media platform. Well, you don't even hear about it anymore because it didn't work out. Uh, and so they've, they've uh, retrenched and come back and are trying something different. What you need is diversity. Uh, so get a whiteboard and sit yourself down and sit some friends down and just sort of kick around. Where would be the best spots for you? How might you do it? And be it online or offline, and what you're going to do specifically in the various aspects of it. Uh, get your mentors. By mentors, I do not mean family and friends, because although they have good intentions, uh, you need some people who will you know, uh, say, no, no, you need to do something else. How do you do it all? I've now totally uh, crushed most, uh, a lot of people, and it's like, wow, I can't do all this. You make it a priority. You set aside a regular time. You get familiar with tools that can help you do some of this, and you don't pick all platforms. 
Uh, you pick those that will work, and you start out very, very small. What can you do possibly? And you take a. This is truly where baby steps is a, is a very good way uh, to approach things. Now we've talked about media and 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 being involved with the media, and it certainly comes up when uh, you need to understand it and be ready. This is another one of those. If for no other reason that you have a crisis. And who do we have on there? Chipotle. They obviously had a big issue recently. The time to start marketing is not when you're in a crisis mode. That is not the time that you want to start diving into this. A, nobody will find you because uh, you're not out there. They're not used to having you out there. And so you want to get something up and running. You want to be seen as a local expert. And so if you get a crisis mode, the press knows you. They know who to talk to. They know sort of what you're going to say and stuff. And so get to know people while things are running smoothly. Because it's not an if anymore. It's a win. The crisis may be, and I, you know, my examples here are going to point out at food crisis based on our, our, our overall theme of this field of fork. But it could be a lot of other things, too, that could go on. So it's not a matter of if. It's just a matter of when uh, that most small businesses. Uh, I worked with an apple cider company who had produced <coughs> non-pasteurized apple cider for years. And then one year, something happened. And um, they are still in business today. This is probably 10 years later. Uh, but they're limping along. I mean, they have never fully recovered. Chipotle is another one. Uh, uh, that has, has, you know, they shut down all of their retail stores. Imagine what that costs them, you know. So uh, Bluebell Ice Cream, I don't know if you were not as familiar with Bluebell Ice Cream. That is a southern thing. Uh, but in, in April, they had listeria. And they literally shut down their plants for from April till January 2016. Uh, they shut down production at all three of their major processing facilities and stuff. Uh, that cost them a lot of money. And I happened to be, uh, as I said last week, uh, my tour of, I took a tour of Texas in many ways. Uh, and I happened to go through, which is the home for Bluebell. And they were just announcing that day that uh, their Chipman ice cream was coming back. You know, So they're slowly building themselves up. but. You know, that was, like I said, January or April of 2015 uh, till January. They had no production, and yet they had a lot of money uh, flowing out and stuff. So marketing in a crisis, uh, same ideas. Hopefully you've got all your tools set up and running. You've got to act fast, preparation. Uh, these are all things that uh, you need to do. Uh, and so you need to have a, a notebook that has all of these things put together. Uh, we talk a lot about 9-11, uh, uh, a horrific day in, in, in U.S. history. Uh, but we often, it's uh, the Rudy Giuliano, the mayor of New York, was references how well he presented himself. And we've, we, I was lucky enough to go to a conference one time where they brought in who was the safety director, the emergency director, uh, not, well, not the director. He was the uh, uh, publicity PR person, and 90% of the questions, you know, you're gonna, he, you know, this person goes on to say, you're gonna know in advance. People want to know if they're safe. What steps are you taking? Is your product off the shelf? You can have all those, you know, some canned phrases already put there together. So when it happens, it's not like you're, you know, starting from square one. Think about this ahead of time and stuff. And as you're putting your marketing plan together, you prepare this part of it also. What happens if, you know, and you want three key points and you want it to be about 30 seconds in length. Why? Because that's what the news media wants. And you pound them over and over and over and you stay on those, those points and you have your crisis team uh, in that. Your crisis team knows who will be the contact. You know, which one of them or yourself are going to be the, the, the contact person for these events. Uh, 
capable spokesperson and talked about that, have that format for media release already ready, and your staff should know, uh, if you have staff, what everybody's role is in the process. Um, yeah, this is just sort of, it really isn't so much on the marketing side, but except it could be you. Uh, what could have you done differently? And you could take out the word food safety crisis and put just a crisis. Uh, I don't know if any of you remember the uh, United Airlines and the guitar, where a person's guitar got destroyed. We all have those uh, instances where, where we've been unhappy. And so the tenth one there, you have to figure out, oh, am I just trying to be legal? Or am I protecting my brand? Or am I protecting your, my consumer? Uh, so keep them informed. Keep them in the loop. Uh, and this is just where it came from is the, the reference on the bottom and stuff uh, of steps you should take as you're doing this. But, you know, the whole, in that whole thing, make sure you keep your audience informed. Your audience, you know, certainly it's regulators. Certainly, it's government officials, it's stakeholders, but your largest audience is uh, those people who are buying and depend upon you uh, for services or for food. Uh, and food is so crucial to us and have, can have such an impact that it's really important uh, that you think about that. These are just some, uh, a little bit more. Uh, Ryan has done some good stuff on social media or on marketing of local foods. Uh, and again, these slides will be on, uh, uh, you know, Julie will have them on the uh, uh, recording of this. I'm going to put them on SlideShare. So, you know, if you can't capture this, don't worry about it. We'll, it will be available. And the offer Hub, HubSpot is an excellent uh, small business or business uh, site to talk about uh, marketing. They're specifically looking at online marketing, but that social media marketing kit, pretty good kit uh, you may want to tap into. So, Julie, we'll turn it back to you. Does anyone have any questions for Glenn? We have a few minutes. I've put them all the way, Julie. <laughs> I don't think so. I thought it was very interesting. And I certainly thank you for, for doing this for us. And we will put it on YouTube. Um, I'm popping in the Qualtrics link that you also will be emailed a copy of that survey um, through the email process that you signed up for originally. So please do the survey. It'll, I promise it will take a couple minutes and that's it. And thank you again for all attending and come back next week.